Hello, everybody. Welcome to Wash Wash Podcast. Black Lives Matter panel uplifting through creativity. I'm your host, the enlightened, the energetic Eddie V. And joining me is the powerful, intelligent, lovely, motivated person on earth that I know, that I love and adore. Please, everybody, lift your hands up and welcome Zombie Kills. Yes! I love you. That's. Can you do that like when I die? Can you roll up? <laughs> Can you roll up and just do that? Because there, there's going to be a couple of haters and I need you to do that. <laughs> anywhere. Uh-huh. Welcome, guys. I know you guys are all new. Uh, thank you guys for guesting on the show. Uh, I appreciate this. Cam, I've gotten to know you recently. Love your face. Carl, <laughs> I'm just now getting to know you. Tiff, I've known you for years. I already love your face. Um, Tiff and I both have lupus and she does a lot of work for the cause and it's really amazing. Um, she's also just a freaking talented cosplayer and voice actor. If you don't know her work, y'all please look her up, but I want to break this off. I want to go ahead and start into the happiness of the week. We've had some good things come out of this, right? Yeah. And I, I can say everybody, we've had some good stuff come out of it. Um, I want to say, like, what is something personally that you felt like has been a good moment for you throughout this, like, past couple weeks of crazy? I want <coughs> I want to start out with, uh, let's go from Cam, Carl, and then Tiff. Yeah, this, uh, you know, it's, it's been bittersweet. It's, uh, you know, I got to uh, go on Inside Gaming this week and co-host an episode there, which was awesome. Um if uh, for people that don't know, that's like where Alana Pierce does like her new stuff now. She used to be at IGN, so um, I got to work with her, which is like insane to me. And then um, I also uh, there are talks now that I might go on IGN Beyond the IGN PlayStation podcast, which is like a, a literally the dream. So for me, so um, I'm I'm I don't know. I'm I'm really thankful, but it's also uh, unfortunate that it took such a tragic event for these type of opportunities to come for us. So, Mm -hmm. yeah. Carl. (laughs) Mm -hmm. Uh, Can't, I listen to podcasts beyond quite a bit. Uh, I'm looking forward to that episode. Um, My positive from the last couple of weeks, I would say also similarly to cam um, due to this tragedy, uh, many people have started to recognize and try to correct themselves and their biases and um, trying to hear from perspectives of people who may not look like them. Um, so recently, you know, my my channel has been getting more um, notoriety and um, just talking to various people from um, the, the game industry about uh, how to become a games uh, wiki editor and things like that so it's, it's just a bunch of positives small things but uh moving towards becoming um a regular in the game industry is uh it puts a smile on my face you know oh. <laughs> oh. uh yeah it's it's only i've been i've been in the business for for voice acting for three years and i've been acting for almost two decades and um, it did take a tragedy, unfortunately, to finally get seen um, for my talents and things like that. Um, there have been so many uh, studios and companies saying that we would like to know, uh, see if there's any more, you know, voice black voice actors or people of color. And it's it's really unfortunate how much we're overlooked in the business. But with this tragedy. Unfortunately, it's 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 crazy. Um, I'm finally getting recognition. I've gotten work, and I am very honored to get work from these companies. But why did I have to get work this way? It's kind of like a double-edged sword. Mm-hmm. It's, it's like real bittersweet. Yes, it's yeah, it's real bittersweet. Bitter, yeah, yeah. I'm like, I'm happy I got work, but on the other hand, it's like, and it's just like it's one of those things where. It shouldn't have to take this for us to be seen because there are some very talented people out there. 
mm-hmm. but we don't get seen for the color of our skin and, or we get typecast, which is pretty awful. So that's that that's what it, that's what it is. I'm actually I'm actually getting recognized, but I just don't there's something in the back of my mind saying this is not right, you know? You let me tell you my thought on this cuz I I had a whole discussion about it yesterday and I feel like it was really poignant for anybody who's struggling with this. Mm-hmm. Um it's horrible that that this kind of change has been precipitated by such a tragic and awful event and then the series of events that are surrounding it. But we have a moment Mm -hmm. and what a fleeting moment it probably will be because of social media and how everybody seems to be so on to the next, you know, it's lasting longer than I thought it would. I'll say that much. Um, And I'm glad, but when we have these moments as people of color, we have to take these moments and run, like grab the ball and run as far as you can with the ball Like, take that ball and run. They may be reaching out to you because you're black, but by the end of it, they're going to be your biggest fan. Mm -hmm. All you need is your foot in the door anywhere. That's all anyone needs in any business, white, black, whatever, is they just need their shining, what is it, their elevator speech, as my dad calls it, because my dad's a life coach. (laughs) He calls it the elevator speech. Give them your elevator speech, y'all, and run that ball as far as you can, because where you drop it is where the next moment they're going to pick that ball up from the, the next time. So for me, I'm running with that ball as far as I can run with the ball. And I'm going to embrace every minute of it because if anything comes from people's death and from this kind of tragedy, I'm going to make it damn good and make it worth it. Uh, I'm going to make it, you know, I'm going to grab as much money for charity as I can. Yeah. I'm, I'm yeah. Gonna, you know, I'm going to grab, I'm going to milk it and grab what I can for charity because ain't nobody going to care about people in prison in a couple of weeks again. And I want to, cause, and that's important to me year round. So try to try to, while you're doing this, cause I know it can feel like, Oh, they're only reaching out to me cause we're back. I'll say this. Uh, a company reached out to me yesterday. I was super pumped about it. Um, uh, but they did not know anything about me at all. They knew nothing about me. Um, and then mm. when they were talking to me, it was clear they know nothing about my content at all. Mm-hmm. <laughs> yeah, like, I, know. I know how that feels. They don't uh, even know. They don't even know like the ooh. gender of my co-streamer who is Battle Bug. Like, they, they don't know anything, right? Um, and they know nothing about me. But I took that fucking ball and I ran <laughs> with it. Best believe, if you're going to go ahead and be like, oh, I'm chicken a box because she was a streamer to watch on GameSpot, well, then that's fine. I'm going to take that money and I'm going to run, too. So, like, you need to know when these people are coming at you with this stuff, don't let that other stuff cloud it up. Just keep your eye on your goalpost and where your morals are and just keep moving. You know what I'm saying? Like, mm-hmm. I just want you all to know that there's no... There should be no survivor's guilt associated with us actually getting our dues. Tiff, you work hard as hell. I see you take some of the coolest games. None of your roles are typical. Uh, Everything that I see you post is cool as hell. You should be damn proud of that. And if somebody's just looking at you because you're brown, they done messed up, but they fitting to get a lot more from it. So don't let that cloud your heart. Uh, Yeah, yeah. (laughs) That's, it's it's one of those. Oh, sorry, sorry. I didn't mean to interrupt. No, no, go ahead. Speak. It is. I, I, I really know how you feel about the whole they didn't know who I was. And they were just like, uh, I, I had one company hit me up and they were like, yeah, blah, blah, blah. And I literally have it in my bio what my strengths are because I, I, I specify in deep voices. Even though I don't have a natural deep voice, I can go super low. And they were like, can you do a kawaii like anime <laughs> voice? I'm like, no, that's I can. Don't get me wrong. But it's not something I specialize in. And you're that's my strength. And as a person like who I'm trying to tell you, like, hey, these are my strengths. You should put me in more of these roles. If you make me the villain, that's fine. I have I can do monster voices as well. But don't don't you didn't listen to my demo at all. Yes, there's like yeah. one high pitched voice, but if you listen to my demo, they're all either mid, mostly mid or low. Mm-hmm. So the mm-hmm. fact that he even asked me, can I do an anime voice? He didn't listen to my demo. <laughs> so I'm like, I'm like, it's 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 frustrating, but that's it's, that's the double edged sword of it. So you can't just you can't you gotta take it or leave it. So it was just yeah. Yeah. I know for me, positive like some of the positives that I've been receiving or 
is kind of like being able to talk to various people and educate and mm -hmm. really hear out from different races what they think of what's going on because i could tell you in my circle of friends and my bubble there there is anger there is frustration and it kind of shows you who are allies and who are just like thinking of themselves at times yeah. i i got up right front tell you Corey and Jesse are straight allies. Jesse Forever. has been on Jesse has been on the front lines in his city with people protesting. He has pictures of it. Me and Corey have been talking and Corey just, you know, not not to put you out, Corey. Corey and Jesse is here, everybody uh produces. So thank you guys. Um we've been talking about the frustration and the hardship in, you know, him as a white male, he doesn't understand what black people go through on a daily basis, definitely in different cities, because what's going on in Mississippi is different. What's going on in Chicago, what's going on in North Chicago, what's going on in Canada, can wherever you're from, uh, wherever like black people are associated and they have to deal with the law and stuff is very different, you know, for some white people dealing with the law is a straight line across the board in, in, in every city. So educating and talking about that has been like a really positive thing uh, for me um, and everything. It, and definitely with our content. And, uh, you know, that's why I, I call it uplifting through our creativity is because we all individually are creating content for people to watch, not just digest, but to, you know, have fun with us, to <laughs> laugh to crack up whether it's animal crossing call of duty uh scale attack um learning <laughs> learning about police knots and or just just various things and seeing us being able to have a unity through our creativity why we podcast sometimes within our own culture or with other cultures our creativity showcase that this is what unity looks like Mm -hmm. And unity is very powerful when it's positive. So I kind of want to ask you guys, um, like, what what has your content have been doing for positivity? Like, you put your content out there, someone sees it, and they like your vibe. Um, how has it been for you, in a sense? Uh, Carl, would you, you like you, to go first? Carl. Can oh. you restate that? At the yeah, end a I'm bit? Yeah. yeah, I'm having. I was about to say I'm having issues kind of <laughs> understanding what you're asking. Um, Meaning that any your like your content that you put out, you know, how has it positivity affect like your viewers or anything? How uh, or just people, you know, have you got new subscribers and they like your content? Not mm -hmm. because that you, oh, yeah. not just not just it's a Black Lives Matter kind of thing, mm -hmm. but they really see you that oh she is she or he is a great content maker, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I want to subscribe to them because I like their vibe. I don't basically is the positivity coming through as content creators. Are you guys feeling the love uh, being paid to you through your content? Are you seeing people come sub, come be supportive, be nice to y'all? Are you seeing the wave of positivity over overall? Yeah. So yeah. I yeah, I can start this. Um, start this out. So, like, since the Spawn on Me podcast, I mean, uh, Zombie were on. Like, I have gotten my follower count, which was like at six hundred at the time, six hundred something, has over doubled since then. Mine was five hundred. It's and doubled. I, yeah, <laughs> and I'm just like, and I'm just like, stop. Like, I don't know. I'm just like, kind of like, <laughs> stop. Like, <laughs> and then you know, I got all these, uh, and then like Inside Gaming, like, helped that uh, a little bit as well. And I'm just, it's um. You know, and I got more people on my in my Twitch streams. I know that Zombies is the exact same way. Uh, going to her streams a few nights this week, um, and I feel like in general, you know, before this, the people that followed me followed me because you know they just they cared about what I had to say or like uh, found my because because. I'm known for having like relatively unpopular opinions regarding video games. Uh, Enjoy the so, club. Uh, yeah, oh so, boy, yeah. So, um, I mean, look, Davi knows about me. I, I, I definitely feel that um, people like how honest I am. Like, I don't like, I don't give any fucks about it. Just like, yeah, I don't like, I don't like this really beloved game, and I don't understand why, and like things like that. Um, so I feel like with 
with these new uh, followers and things like that, I feel like that some of them, like, I feel like at first, like, the, these people decide to, like, follow just because of that. But I also feel like there, ha- at to a certain degree, there has to be, like, I actually like what he has to say just for what he's saying, not just because I'm black. You know what I mean? So, uh, I don't know. That's that's kind of how I feel about it. Uh, what about you, Carl? Because you're new to content creating. You know, mm-hmm. you're getting into it. Uh, like, have you seen it help others or anything? Or, like, have you seen anything positivity happen for you personally? Uh, yeah, for sure. Um, I, I'm glad that all of our Twitter followers are doubling. Mine went from 7 to 14. So <laughs> that's what's up. <laughs> And uh, <laughs> but it's a no, journey real, on Twitter, bro. Just it, give it, it some honestly time. is. I see. I see. Uh, <laughs> but no, through Twitter, I actually resented social media. Uh, I got on Facebook for a long time because of it. Uh, Instagram, same story. But I, I got back into Twitter when I started up my YouTube channel because I know it could, you know, connect people, gamers specifically. Um, and but through Twitter this week, I was able to talk to both Zach Ryan and Miranda Sanchez of IGN. Um, and that, that like, I wasn't on a podcast with them or anything, but it, I just felt, you know, a spark in my heart. Uh, you know, I'm, in, I'm doing the right thing. I'm going in the right direction because these people saw what I was doing already and can see the direction that I'm going and, and they like where, I'm, where I am right now, you know. Um, so I'm, I'm excited for the future. And... Uh, a lot of positives to share because of this week. What about you, Tiffany? Have you uh, have what you put out like maybe in the past that people are catching up or um, just like something that you just did for fun that you put out? Has it been positively like helping people or in helping you? Oh, yeah, I have. Um, like I said, as um, people have been actually my my demo has was at like 6,000 now it's doubled for views. Nice. Um, and so it's, but, and I've also been like hearing other people come in saying, Oh, you have such an awesome demo. I want to get into voice acting. Can you help me as a black person get into voice acting? And I tell them the websites they can go to, which places they can start and things like that. And with my streaming, um, I'm a charity streamer, so I don't really benefit personally benefit from anything Mm -hmm. everything everything that i make goes to my charities of choice so but my view i've been getting i haven't streamed for a week and i've been sitting my alerts have been going off scaring me half to death when i'm playing something by myself and i'm just like wow this is crazy because they i i they actually go back and look up my name and stuff like that it's been overwhelmingly positive it's it's been overwhelmingly positive because now i can use that to help new and up and coming inspiring voice actors to get into the business more so we can have more black voice actors in there and not be afraid to get our voices out there and trust me my dms have i had a triple a company <laughs> give my dms <laughs> lord i had a triple a company give my dms and i'm just like yes i will see you on monday we can talk but overall i'm get just asking that check <laughs> right <laughs> i'm like yeah no but m- mainly i i'm happy to help other people that's just my 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 blessing and curse to help other up and coming people. And that's been the greatest thing that I've been happy about with the platform. Yeah. And I was talking to you zombie, like before we started the show, like one big major positive thing came out of this. Like after you talked on spawn on me, like it was, yeah. it, you like we talked and I told and I told Zombie and I'm gonna let her, if she wants to t- if you want to tell that I'll let you reveal it but I told her that I was crying in happiness at work I had to take time for myself because something I'm not gonna big cry happened. today I'm not gonna cry y'all aren't gonna take me down that nah, road I'm not, gonna let y'all, I'm, not, I'm not gonna let y'all take me down that road today but I will say this um anybody who knows me knows that I spent time incarcerated uh and it was a very wrongful conviction and wrongful situation and I've known it. It's been 10 years since it happened, almost eight years, eight years since it happened. Um, and I didn't have the money at the time. I was a single mom uh, at the time and I was working three jobs and it was really rough and I couldn't afford 
a public like like an actual attorney so i got a public defender who literally met me five days before uh i went into court came in and said sign a piece of paper saying you're guilty so you can you know just go she gave me no options she didn't talk to me she didn't ask me about my life it was my first time ever being in trouble in my existence not even a speeding ticket um so anyways i got convicted i got a 20-year prison sentence for a non-violent non-drug related crime <laughs> Uh, in Mississippi. I served three years of my life because I got 15 of it suspended, five to serve. I served three years for good, aka perfect behavior because I was too traumatized. <laughs> Anyways, lawyer reached out to me because it spawned on me um, and said that they would help me expunge or retry and have it completely remove my case. Um, they beautiful. pulled my files and were like, there's no way this conviction is going to stand uh, if you have a good lawyer. So do you want to just do this? And I just fell apart crying. <laughs> like, uh, it's the most powerful thing that could happen to me. That felony conviction held me back from some things, but I never let it slow me down from my life, I guess. Mm -hmm. I made a whole new life and moved forward. I just found ways to move around it because I'm not the type of person that lets adversity stop me ever. Um, and look at this great, beautiful life I have. I have no, no regrets. Like, I have no regrets for the direction my life has took. I will not say that I let it take things from me. But what freedom to know that I was right and that this was wrong and that I can get that felony removed from my name. You know, like, that's a very powerful thing. And so I'm really grateful for that. If nothing else came from that, that was freaking awesome <laughs> oh, thank you <laughs> yeah uh, what i'm going to ask you guys um using your creativity creativity to speak mentally and physically to others like how has it been like using your platform to really talk to people like in because everybody's mental state is just everywhere right now and mm -hmm. some people are physically are hurting from this mental state but have your positivity like really spoken to them, like really got them out of the funk and everything? Like my friend in Washington, like he was upset and he was frustrated. And I literally told and I was just talking to him, um, as a content creator, just be like, you know, hey, you make you might want to listen to some chill hop, or you know, you wanna you might want to check a video out, something that brings you some positive vibes because so much frustration and anger is so pent up. Maybe somebody who is speaking that you might want to hear might calm you down, might make you might make you think clearer, you know, and might actually make you focus on what's important and everything. So have you got have any of your guys' content been doing that uh, recently? Or even for you personally, if it's been helping you mentally? Uh, Zombie, you want to I'll start. Uh, I think that my uh, I've gotten a couple emails about people who saw Spawn on me, and I've got a couple of really nice DMs. We'll not talk about the crappy ones, but I got some really nice <laughs> ones that said how powerful they thought what I said was mm -hmm. and how much they agreed with me. I think Cam probably had the same thing. There's one that was a cop that reached out to me that was legit powerful. Um, I kept my big dick energy, though. Y'all don't worry about it. I kept <laughs> it, and I told him straight up, he needs to find a new job. <laughs> <laughs> I said, love this, love the sentiment, get a new job and you'll be hitting on everything. Um, <laughs> but it's it's kind of cool to get that. It feels really cool to have had that chance to be a cam on such a powerful thing and have people just coming in being like, what you said really resonated with me. And I, watching people watch it live during that cesspool of crazy the other night <laughs> uh, was good and terrible because I saw people being like, I never thought about it like that when I was talking or like saying things when, when Cam was talking about his opinion, like people watching them live have reactions to it was really powerful for me. And a Twitch staff named Mary Kish showed it too. And then she came in my chat afterwards and I watched her chat's reaction to what we were saying. And it's kind of empowering to see that people believe what we said because we said yeah. some things that were... <laughs> raw we were raw i feel like I, I mean how do you feel cam since doing spawn on me because i mean spawn on me was big for both of us you know mm -hmm. yeah and like i mean uh and i think the thing that makes it interesting is that like because of our different experiences are but especially between me and you i felt that you know we didn't particularly agree on everything but we we yeah. also couldn't 
you know, we we didn't like, no, you're stupid for thinking that. I was just like, no, you have a di- you had a completely different life as a black woman. I had a completely different upbringing as a black man. Like, you know, and um, so I thought it was interesting. Like, I thought I, I was glad that you know um, we had those differences. And yeah, I got like I got messages in uh, my DMs as well, saying like, you know, uh, thank you for speaking out and like things like that. And, um, and I, you know, I talked about how basically I went to high school where, um, it was very, uh, there were a lot of Mormons at my high school and most of them, because I was in higher level educated classes, you know, I was the only black, smart black, um, uh, man specifically that, uh, was in those classes. So I was like a target, you know, automatically because of that. Um, and because you know black people can't be smart, guys. You we, can't. Um, we can't. We so, can't. Oh boy! So, yeah. Uh, or it's called talking white. Talking yeah, white. Exactly. Yeah. I was about to say. I was like. <laughs> exactly. So, um, so I actually had someone who was who's Mormon message me saying like, "Hey, like, I heard your experience like with um with Mormons, and you know we're we're trying like we're trying to get better and like things like that. Uh, kind of comparable to." Uh, I, I assume to what the cop said to you, Zombie. Um, and I was just like, wow, this is like really, this is really cool. Cause I, I, I have plenty of close friends still to this day that like I went to high school with that weren't like assholes um, that are, were, are Mormon and are my friends, you know? Um, so it was, that one was like probably the one that I was just like, wow. Like I was, I was really surprised to expect, like to, to receive that message at that time. Yeah, what about you, Tiffany? Like in Canada, how has like has the mental state and physical state with you with people who see you and stuff? Has there been like a change or anything? Has it been helpful or anything? I, I'm glad you redid the question because I keep disconnecting from Skype. <laughs> <laughs> Skype, okay. Skype hates Tiff today. I don't it's, know what yeah, I yeah. Skype. Skype. Maybe because I don't use it, it's just like you know what, this is the punishment for not using us, but um, I, I, I'm I born and raised, I was born and raised in the States. I moved to Canada because my husband's Canadian. So the current state of events here is kind of really mixed. There are a lot of people that um, understand it, and we have, there are protests here. They're very, very peaceful protests. Which is shocking because sometimes it gets wild in Canada, especially about hockey. Um, so <laughs> it's been it's been kind of like a it's been strange, honestly. Um, I have friends, I have allies saying, "Hey Tiff, how you doing today?" <laughs> and I'm like, "I'm doing okay. How's your mental health?" I'm like, "My mental health's okay." They're like, "We know what's going on." I'm like. I know what's going on too. It's weird though, right? <laughs> Can I just say it's a little weird? It's weird. But then I have, I, I just posted about this on Twitter. Um, I'm not going to say which family members, but my husband's family members have finally showed their true colors. And uh, they don't, when I'm trying to talk to them and I educate them about what's going on in the States, because I was a poor girl from the ghetto, Bradbury Heights, Maryland. Uh they don't get it. Tim, They're like, why did oh, I not know you were from Maryland. Huh? Why did I not know you were from Maryland? I'm from Bradbury Heights, Capitol Heights, y'all. I'm, I'm from <laughs> Rockville, Maryland. Y'all from Rockville. That's why y'all get along so well. And then I right. Grew up in DC. <laughs> like I moved to DC, but like I went to high school in Rockville. Okay. Anyways, can go back. Born in Washington DC, raised in Maryland. Um. See, this is what we call chop it up, y'all. <laughs> <laughs> But it's one of those experiences where it's like I am I'm having to tell people like what's going on and they're like, Well, I got this one. And this one made me laugh. Well it's like, well, black people don't have it as bad as they used to. And I'm like, You do know when they had, you know, the whole segregation thing, they still kept us in poor areas, right? And from it's there redlining. Yeah, I was like, I was like, and you know, because of more poor areas, there's more crime, so they're gonna put more pressure on the police there, right? <laughs> you know, just letting you know. And then when they do the next census, they're gonna be like, oh, nothing's changed. Let's put more pressure on the police. I had to, 
I had to sit down and talk to my husband's soon, probably soon to be ex family members um, about this, and they just did not get it at all because they're Canadian and they don't have these kind of things. But we're not going to talk about that because Canada has a really bad. Canada indigenous- has a problem with a lot of indigenous murder. Yes, films, there's so a lot of wanted- indigenous issues here in Canada, and I have, See, I that's have, brand yeah. new to me. I was you, what? Oh that's brand- yeah. Oh, bro. I. Baby- Missing all the time. Nobody cares discussion. when they die. Yep. Mm-hmm. Yeah. It's it's a whole thing. It's a whole thing. I've, but to play off what Tiff said, uh-huh. I want to say this. I haven't been able to celebrate one bit of the joy from Spawn on me or anything that's happened with any of my family. Not one family member. Why is that? Because my family's all Caucasian. Um, my dad was adopted by Caucasian people. So and my dad's black and my dad's cool. You know what, like, guys? My white family, I live in Mississippi, where all my white family is. My mom, who's very racist. I, I think I talked about it on the show with you, Cam. Yeah. My mom's super, super racist. Her husband's mm-hmm. racist. Um, I have half-white siblings. They're all, they're all white, but they're my half-siblings. But they're mm-hmm. white, like, with my mom and my stepdad. And they're all super racist. Like, they're all Trump supporters. They're all, like, vehemently racist. So, like, I haven't been able to say, like... Hey, I'm doing really well. I'm finally getting like, you know, some some traction. Like, I haven't been able to do that with my family. And it kind of sucks. You know, like so like I'm celebrating my victories with people that are my my online family, my gamer friends, you know, like and I've been celebrating with them, but I haven't got to have like one like family moment because all I'm seeing my family post is trash. Like the like it's bad. So my Ugh. positive things have just been like keeping my head down, video game family, video game friends, and watching the spin from them and their joy. Like that's it. Like going in and and finding all these new black content creators that I wasn't, you know, they're not made super visible, so I would have never have found them. <laughs> Dude, you know, like seeing yeah. like me and Cam linking up. I love watching Cam play video games. I'm all about <laughs> that life. Like, I was like, Cam, we got to play some Call of Duty. Like, like, let's fucking do it. Like, I, me and Cam may have had some differences of opinion, but I can see Cam's heart and Cam's vibe. And I'm like, that's where I want to be. And like, if, and as a follower, because I'm a follower of his now, you know, that's where, you know, you have to look to the light as people following these people. I follow Tiff. When Tiff gets back on, you know, makes content. Now that I'm over on Twitch, cough, I'm over on Twitch. Uh... (laughs) (laughs) Bye, Mixer. I'm sorry about it, but it's just, bye. And I'm over on Twitch, and I'm just, like, living my best life. I'm, like, surrounded by this sea of blackness over here that's been really positive. Um, Seeing the black community on Twitch, for me, and how embracing of everybody they are, has been a whole different thing, because I came from Mixer where I was just hanging out in White Land, like... (laughs) (laughs) And uh, my content had... I was doing really well, as you know, Ed. I was doing really well. I was about to be a yeah. partner on Mixer. And uh, I just said, F it, I'm going to start all the way over on Twitch. <laughs> Which is scary. <laughs> you know, to yeah. lose, like, thousands of followers. But I have found a cocoon of blackness that's been bringing me joy uh, over here. And I'm discovering new black content creators due to all the the hype right now. So if there's anything good coming from it, I feel like I'm seeing... So many people I would have never have seen that would have been pushed to the bottom of directories, and I'm loving it. Like I, I don't know if y'all are finding the same thing on your feeds, but I'm like, ooh, 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 you know. <laughs> like, let me follow this guy. Let me follow this girl, and that's pretty cool to me. Uh, well, I, I wanted to. I know that Car- uh, Carl hasn't spoken yet, and I, but I wanted to uh, follow up kind of with uh, uh, having a like a white family during this situation um, because I'm half white, my mom's uh, white, and. Uh, we're from, I was born in England. Uh, my mom's born and raised in England and, you know, she immigrated over here. I live in the U.S. Uh, and, uh, you know, my mom is like black ally. Like let's like, she is, she has changed her profile picture to me. Black lives matter around the circle. I'm just like, yes, go <laughs> off. Um, and then, you know, my British family, like, you know, obviously there's stuff going on over there as well with everything that's going on. But and I, I, I definitely think that they understand and they're 100% like in support of everything that I do. Like I've had 
like two of my cousins from England the past few days j- jump into my Twitch chat and like things like that. And um, it's uh, it's cool that like even though they don't fully, I-, I feel like that they don't fully understand the situation that's going on right now. Like specifically, like for me being black in America, like they're still really understanding and supportive. So uh, shout out to my to my white family. <laughs> shout out to Cam's family because they're crushing it. <laughs> shout out to them. Uh, what about you, Carl? Like, has this creativity like helped you mentally and physically for your viewers and also for you? Uh, yeah, just echoing what I said earlier, allowing my voice to, um, you know, kind of get a signal boost during this time. And um, I appreciate the, you know, it's not necessarily a handout. Mm-hmm. It's more so just people finally, uh, I guess, being more open with um, the things that they choose to consume. Yeah. Now, I kind of want to address, because this is a big topic, the negativity from oh, our Lord. creativity. Um, you know, people, we talked earlier, bro. So I, people, y'all know how I feel about it. I'm like, why would you even waste your time to, as a person, why would you waste your time to jump in somebody else's uh, vibe, like good vibe, creativity, and discussion and stuff to be negative? You know, mm-hmm. definitely our, our model here at Boss Rush is be better, uh, you know, and let's play games and stuff. And our the model is, comes from not only let's be better at playing games, let's be better to one another. Um, you know, when we uplift each other, we make gaming better. You know, we mm-hmm. already, as a gaming community, we already get looked at something. So when you add racism and negative aspects to it, you make the community look worse. You know, mm-hmm. we already have to deal with that stuff online. Do, uh, like, we have to worry about being swatted. We got to worry about some some white kid at six year old calling us the N word, even though that we may be the same color as that person. You know. Um, or call it some adult, some some crazy things. Like we already have a negative stuff that we're still trying to fix. So going into going into another race, definitely into black cre- uh, creative content, and to say some negative stuff. Like, how do you think we should handle it, or what? Like, zombie, you definitely have done deal with stuff and continue to deal with stuff. And you know how I handle it. I roast mm-hmm. the flames out of their souls. Uh, <laughs> I think that being quiet about it. So many people, content creators who are like big streamers have told me like, don't acknowledge them. Don't da 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 da. But I think the thing is, it's been so long mm-hmm. that we've been not acknowledging them. them like like not saying a word to them and just letting them like continue to spew their little racist crap and just merely booting them out of the chat. Doesn't do it. <laughs> yeah. It doesn't do it. But when you shame their asses and you let them know that shit ain't acceptable, it's not going to fucking fly in your chat. You're not going to have that stuff. You're going to report them. Like, I think it needs to be said. Like, I'm just, I'm not the fucking one while I'm streaming. (laughs) I'm just not not the one. You know, some people are. And I, I think that makes you more digestible. And I think that also comes with, like, diluting your blackness a little bit to make it Mm. more digestible as a streamer because you don't want to be seen as ghetto and you don't want to be seen as whatever but yet i see clips of white girl streamers being really mean to people over subs and people make them viral every day you know so oh lord you know what i'm saying like (laughs) i'm gonna be mean to you if you're mean to me (laughs) i'm not gonna let you come whip on me in my own damn chat i wouldn't let you bust up in my house and start yelling at me either there's nobody that's gonna be like they're gonna come to my front door and be like you you this you this you this and me be like would you please leave like it's just i don't know it's just it feels personal to me because my stream is my house it's my safe place i guard Mm -hmm. it and i cultivate it with the people that I care about. My chat doesn't deserve to see it. They don't deserve to have their space invaded by a, a, you know someone who's perpetrating these type of thoughts. And I don't know. I just, you know how I handle it. I tell them mm-hmm. to get the fuck out. I, yep. I straight up say to them, when they come in with that shit yesterday, when they came in with the George Floyd is, is da 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 and Black Lives Matter is a joke in the chat yesterday, I said, you can get all the way the fuck out of this chat. You're not welcome here. I want y'all to report this name. Everybody in the chat report them. Like, don't do it. 
and and I don't know how y'all feel about handling it, but that's how I handle stuff. You know, but how the, do y'all handle it? Like, like Tiff, Carl, I, you got a lot of people in there. And Carl, <laughs> like you're new to this, it can you you know right kind of for door shockers, but I feel like that's very professional. Like mm-hmm. there's two different, there's gonna be two different levels. Like because Carl, you haven't you pro- you probably seen it in school, do your job and stuff, how things go. Didn't dealing with negativity with other kids and and everything, but as a streamer and getting into content, do you do you feel like you're ready for it and you can handle it due due to the experience as a teacher? Um, and Cam, like with you on dual sharkers and stuff, you probably get a a lot of disagreements and you may get angered uh, viewers and listeners who might just go really off the handle. So, like, how do you two handle that? Carl, I want to start with you. Like, how, what was your, how would you deal with negativity? Um, well, thankfully, I haven't had any haters come, you know, spewing garbage on my channel or my streams or anything like that yet. But I mean, um, you know, it, it's inevitable in this industry. Uh, trolls mm-hmm. exist. Uh, and they, they, uh, I'm convinced that they just get, <laughs> uh, they, they feel like they earn experience points by tearing other people down or some shit. Um, but I, I'm an amazing person at ignoring. Um, and I felt like that was probably going to be my solution. But as I think about it more, as I see the, that bottling things up explodes eventually, uh, I'm, I'm with Zombie and I'm about the Friday ass if they come for me, you know? <laughs> They need it. <laughs> Trolls can't live in the light. They're like little germs. They need they need the sun to just blast them. Cause, uh, and what about you, Cam? Like with you being with Door Sharkers, like have you seen how negativity affect like your content or just even you or even just Door Sharkers together? Um. So as so, uh, in different perspectives. Um. With Dual Shockers, like it's kind of just a thing with journalists where you don't read the comments. You just ignore the comments. You don't care what they have to say. Like you just write what you gotta write. Unless it's something that like it's an editorial. Like if it's an editorial mm-hmm. piece where it's like an opinion piece, like, you know, I'll I'll check the comments uh normally. Uh even though I still shouldn't, just because I'm just like, I'm curious as to what people say. Um, because like the last big editorial I wrote was like something regarding the Assassin's Creed games. And I'm a really big fan of that franchise, but it's not the franchise I fell in love with. It's not, it, it, it's not anymore. And, uh, and mm-hmm. I, and I looked in the comments and a lot of them, it was all positive. It was actually like, yo, this is like this. Uh, I agree with this. Like I will hope I want Assassin's Creed to go back to its old ways and things like that. And I was like, wow, like that's, um, you know, I've, I've, I got a positive, uh, feedback about this, uh, primarily, but, um, you know, sometimes it's just like, no, this is stupid. Yada, yada, yada. And normally with those that, you know, it's just, it, it's just ignore. Um, when it comes to like Twitch and things like that, I haven't really gotten anything hateful, uh, through Twitch yet. Um, but like in those situations, yeah, I, I'm kind of like on the, I'm kind of like on the opposite end of the spectrum. I just like, I just like block them, ignore them and, and, and move on. It, um, you know, cause I, cause while I think that. Like, I think that uh, Zombie and uh, Carl's point of view is completely valid, and I see where they're coming from. I feel like that the outcome of just roasting them and getting them out of there is just going to add more fuel to their fire, while ignoring yeah. them makes them feel less... It isn't, it is, you're not acknowledging them. You're not acknowledging them for what they're doing. So they, you know, like... And, 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 it, and it puts me in that headspace where, like, I don't think about what that person is doing anymore. Like... Yeah. You know, I feel like if I were to roast them and then kick them out, it that it would get to me. It would just continuously like. Sometimes get... it does get to me. Sometimes it, they've exactly. gotten mm-hmm. to me. Sometimes they don't. Sometimes I'll just do what you say and just boot them. Yeah. Like if they're spewing a bunch of insanity, sometimes I'm just like, I don't got the energy for this today. Mm-hmm. I'm yeah. just gonna block you. But it just really depends on my mood. You know, like there's sometimes yeah. you just get fed. Like I had one the one guy yesterday made like five different accounts. Like. <laughs> Right. See, see, like I Tiff, do you understand? Like, why would you take the time to do all of that? Yeah. Tiff is a bigger, a bigger girl on Twitch who streams. Like, she's she's probably had this happen. 
They come in, they make five different accounts. You finna get roasted. I have yeah. to roast you. You leave me no choice. You've loaded the gun. Here it goes. But if I'm streaming and I'm playing Sims and I'm vibing and they come in with the hate, I will just ban them. Yeah. But if I'm sitting there and you really coming in and you really you made the time for me, I'm gonna make the time for you. So like, I, what Cam says is totally valid. Like I was saying, uh, I Corey. I was telling Corey, I was just like, sometimes you got to feel like Jay-Z and, you know, brush the dirt off your uh, your shoulder, yeah. you know, yeah. because it's just like, yeah, I could stop what I'm doing, but I got a 25 hit combo and I'm trying to get an achievement. Go ahead and say <laughs> what you need to say, do what you need to do, because guess what? I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to finish my combo. I'm going to go to KFC or Harold's or I'm going to get some chicken. I'm going to come back. And I'm going to continue to stream. And guess what you're going to do? Whether you hop on, make fifteen thousand accounts, I'm still going to do what I'm going to do. Now, yep. you could be on my kind of level and do the same thing and be and be vibrant and having a good time, or you could continue to go show your true colors and be on the lower level with the rats. And stuff. So, Tiff, mm -hmm. how do you handle it? Oh. What's your policy? It depends on my mood. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. Yeah. It depends think, on my mood. It's it's yeah. like it's like I had uh I have people Lord Jesus. Okay. <laughs> let me let me try not to swear as much as I want to. Um I had a fuckwit in my DM saying <laughs> I just did it. I had a I had a person in my DM saying that um Oh, why are you getting so many opportunities because you're black? And I'm like, no, darling, I'm getting opportunities because I'm talented. My mother taught me something growing up. The worst way to piss someone off is to give them a piece of humble pie. Kill so, them with kindness. Yeah, kill them with kindness. And I do that a lot with like people that like come in and just, just try to come for me. And I'm just like, well, you know what? I wish you the best of luck. God bless you. Blah, blah, blah. I wish you the best. I, I hope that. you, I hope you have a wonderful life. I hope you find happiness. If you need anything, um, if you need therapists, I know a few people that can help you. Um, <laughs> but, <laughs> but it's like that once in a while where I pop off and I call them a candy corn cunt and tell them to get the fuck Ooh. out of my DMs. <laughs> you said it. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Look, I see Carl. <laughs> that really shocked me because if y'all know Tiff, y'all know she don't talk like that. Like right. I've known her. Oh. I, I, I don't know. think I've ever. It's like it's like oh, it's, it's quite like, a series of words. You guys, you guys play gotcha games. It's like that one one in like a hundred chance that I will say something to somebody, and I'm like I'm a humble person. It was just the way I was raised. My mom told me kindness hurts more than hate, so like it was just. <laughs> People are like, wow. <laughs> it was just I'm a shock. I'm shook. <laughs> I, I, I know for me, and thank you, Corey, for always having my back. Shout out to you, <laughs> boss man, for having my back. Because there are some things that I have said. And he, mm -hmm. on, on the back end, has probably seen some crazy stuff come his way about what I said. And so thank you for having my back, like I said. Um I kind of don't have to deal with negativity or anything because mm -hmm. I maybe it's because of the area that I come from and maybe it's because of the community that uh, my content is shared with and stuff um, is that I have we haven't dealt with negative I think the only time I've actually dealt with neg negativity with my creative content is saying that uh, and Corey, you probably already know where I'm about to go with this. So I love you, bro. Him. Um, I said that first party games are not exclusive. And the only reason why I said that is because if a certain game appears on another system, whether it's within that platform, like if you put a game on PS2 and the show on PS3, it's not exclusive. It's a first party game, but it's not exclusive. Well, exclusive means it's supposed to be on one system. Okay. But I just said, that game that's on that one system not supposed to be on something else. And everybody yep. hopped off. And Ooh, I'm sitting me. here laughing my tail off and eating some little Debbie's. Straight, <laughs> just, straight, straight being like, you took the time out as an older man to yell at me about what I personally think about what I call a game and not you. You want to call it game? Imagine. I mean, you're technically imagine. right. Like imagine if you're getting so on the mad. technical part of it, you are. I'm gonna go ahead and just give it to you. You're technically, technically, you're right. Yeah, Corey's technically right. Yeah, and and I can understand. <laughs> I can understand if 
Because I feel like exclusive means that if Bayonetta 2 got made by Nintendo, let's say Bayonetta 2 didn't come to Switch, it was only on Wii U. That's an exclusive. Why? It didn't come from none of Nintendo's uh, uh, development system. Didn't get ported. It, yeah. it came, exactly. Well, it came from out some second party outsourced. Mm-hmm. If they want to put, if they, if Wind Waker HD was made by Tecmo Kobe and it stayed on Wii U, that's an exclusive. Why? Because Toby, uh, Toby Ke- uh, Kobe Tecmo is not part of Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Horizon, Horizon Zero Dawn going to PC. Death Stranding going to PC. Hell yeah! Uh, <laughs> uh, I played Death Stranding, but I really love Norman Reedus, and I want to do it. Oh, even love- even then, like there are Hold like on. I gotta like, show you guys something. I was gonna say uh, really quick, like that got like God yeah, of go War. Ahead, yeah. You can play God of War on PC right now, even though it's not technically on PC because it's on PS now. So technically, you can't like you can play it on PC. So uh, the exclusive term needs to stop being used so flippantly. Right, yeah. and, that's, and that's why I feel like if you call, yeah, uh, got the baby. <laughs> I got my baby. Yes. Oh, you. Uh, yeah, I really wanted that, man. I love you now, Tiffany. I love you so much. If anybody's watching and they have one, please send Cam one. I see the FOMO on his face. So I'm not like I never really played a co- like uh, like hard. You know, I, I I never really played a Kojima game until Death Stranding, and I was like, this looks really cool, but I don't know if I'm gonna like the game or not. So I didn't want to commit to getting it and then end up disliking the game. Uh, so. But in hindsight, I do like the game. I haven't finished it. Uh, I, I really need to get back to it. Is. But now yeah. I'm just like, I don't have it. And it's a really cool collector's edition. It, it's like right now, I think PSN, for people who are watching this live, I think it's $24 with their sale on PS4 going on. Uh, mm-hmm. So if you, I think it's the right time to snag the game for people who had their opinion about it. I guess uh, I'm going to try it. I, it's Norman Reedus, so I'm 100% in. I'm but. a huge Mads Mikkelsen fan. He is, like, seriously, like, European daddy for me. I loved him in Hannibal. Yeah. That's what, he did I his thing in Hannibal. So, oh, my God. Can I he's say Hannibal? that he looks I can't watch this? creepy stuff. I can watch zombie stuff, really but good. not creepy stuff. Like It was super creepy, so I so get like, it. <laughs> yeah, like, it's kind here's of my philosophy. Anything that could be real, I don't like. Uh, right yeah. so like serial killer stuff like there are serial killers out there like actually chopping people up. so that's i like have <laughs> to shy away from it you know what i'm saying like so but if it's like zombies and shit which with you know I, i'm like i can handle this because it's like a distance separated not that it's not yeah. probable but it's like a, a distance separated enough for me to do it it's why dead by daylight makes me have like literally, I wore a blood pressure uh, monitor during <laughs> one game with dead by daylight because my community wanted me to and my blood pressure was so high, y'all. I get so scared. And then I start whisper yelling and panicking. It's not. <laughs> I start, what, I'm what, like, if, what if you had the Nintendo Vitality Sister playing that game? <laughs> if it ever, did that come out? It never came out. Right. I was like, <laughs> I'm so. I can't. Like, people are like, I'm going to do this horror game. I'm going to be doing this. And I'm like, I will be up late at night having to watch My Little Pony to de stress after I do this. You know, so- I, mean, I play, oh, nothing. I play nothing but horror games. But on the d- top of the Death Stranding, it's, I don't think anything, not to say any spoilers, but I really think it's not going to happen what's happening in the game. So it's very fiction. It's super sci fi okay. fiction. Yeah, yeah it, it's, it's, it's Kojima. If you played any Kojima game, what are Kojima? Like, okay, can I no say chances. it? I don't. What uh, are metal, Kojima metal, 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 oh, metal Gear okay. Solid, Metal Gear nope. Solid franchise. He's a um, the Enders. Death, no. Death, Death Stranding. Uh, oh. Bokai? Is that it? That no. DS, the, the first, Game Boy Advance game. He did the also did the first Castlevania remake game, which Let was. Let me uh, ask you this. What's that? Well, Zombie, have you seen Black Mirror? Yes. Uh, do you remember the episode where they had the guy go to the game company and he put on that yes. uh, headset? That dude who was the game company uh, head yeah. was based off Kojima. Mm-hmm. Like, mm-hmm. That's pretty much a, a real life uh, rendition. I don't think of I've him. played a Kojima game, y'all. It's, Metal Gear um, would be a great start. Yeah, Metal. Like, I actually started playing through the Metal Gear Solid franchise for the first time. The first one is like, it's it's fucking one of the best games ever made to be honest like i i I had my issues with it like personally like i think that i and this is just kojima in general he's terrible like he makes the weirdest control schemes in his games (laughs) but uh but (laughs) um 
but well, just like playing Metal Gear Solid on the on the PS One, like mm-hmm. it's one of those games where you just think, how the fuck does this game exist on the PlayStation One? Like it, it's just so different, and I it's so it it's, does it's, some it's, kind it's, of drug or and something. And that's why I say if, if you if you want to get an idea of Kojima, Snatcher is this well known game that he did for the Sega CD. Yeah. So yeah. You would see, I did love Sega CD, y'all. It was like my favorite. Really? I'm so mad at myself. I'm, I'm you- telling y'all how old I am right now, which is fine. But every Friday, I got five dollars uh, from my grandmother after she would like rack up from her bridge uh, and stuff. <laughs> like she would make money, and she would give me five dollars and quarters, and I would go to Blockbuster mm, and I would spend the five dollars and do the two for five. So I would get two mm-hmm. video games for five, and you'd get them for the whole weekend. And so I would always get Sega CD games. I think I played, uh, there was this one where you're like a detective in space, kind of looked like Fifth Element style um, that I was like really big on. Was it F V? And yeah, you were like a detective and you were in space. Oh. And then I think Max Payne might have been one or or Max Payne might have been right after that. But there were like two, but Sega CD was like my big thing that I had for like the longest, probably my longest owned like system that I played the most for middle American. school. Okay. Yeah, like for middle school, because like I started with an Atari. <clears throat> so so well, you're really telling your age right now. Oh, that's okay. <laughs> like <laughs> yeah, Zombie is probably about the same age. I, I'm gonna be older than you, Zombie. I started with seven. an. Okay. I started Before with that. an oh, you're, NES. Oh, yeah, you're older than me by a few years. Yeah, I started with the NES, but I th- like I think like from my actual memory of actually playing games, my first like real system was the Game Boy Col- The Game Boy. That's that's like. What I uh, like, I remember. Vi- I actually have vivid memories still of playing that system. Like I remember getting the NES and SNES for Christmas. I don't remember playing those at all. I played oh. Burger Time on I, the Atari. Oh, God, Atari. that I game is a, a hard. Yeah, I had Atari <laughs> seventy two hundred. Uh, I had the NES. I had two Sega Master Systems. I had a Super Nintendo, a Turbo Graphics sixteen, a N sixty four, a Dreamcast. Her uh, parents were cool. So Very y'all cool. had money. PlayStation okay. One, uh, PlayStation. Yeah, I. Yeah, I your parents had, were cool. <laughs> oh, my mama knew. As long I will as my say mom, my parent, my mom's racist, but she loves some damn video games. <laughs> my mama had that Nintendo controller trying to beat the first World of Mario, and now, right now, she has a Switch with mm-hmm. with all three slots of New Super Mario Brothers U completed one hundred percent. I'm just well. like, are you? Are, are, yeah, I had nothing to do. She- I'm that mom now. I love being that mom. I love yeah, my, my, my four year old just started playing her because my kids all have their switches now. So like, my four year old's playing Secret Neighbor like a junkie on Switch right now. She like loves it, and like she's really te- she's terrible at it, but like <laughs> she's having the time of her life, y'all. And she comes in, and she's like, "Mom, can you look up Secret Neighbor videos on the YouTube so I can see to to know how I'm winning?" Because she wants to like watch playthroughs. Uh, and I'm like, that's you that's are my amazing. <laughs> like, you're amazing. My five year old, my eleven year old, they are the most genius Minecraft creators I've ever seen in my life. Like, yeah. they do stuff. My eleven year old wants to be a YouTube creator, so like, she's she talks to herself while she games, and she like records little videos. I haven't let her put her them up yet because I'm like worried about people being racist idiots. But like, yeah, she's yeah, so yeah. talented. She's uh, what, about babies. You, what about you, Carl? Uh, Side um, note, what like was growing the, up gaming. Oh, I'm like, yeah. <laughs> uh, so, that. <laughs> yeah. Uh, Super Nintendo was our first, like, that was a, the family console. Uh, it was technically my older sister's. And when I turned 10, I accidentally, well, not accidentally, I was manipulated by GameStop into selling <laughs> that system for pennies on the dollar. And I still, I still feel bad. <laughs> I bought her the, um, you know, the Super Nintendo Mini when it came out. Uh-huh. And she's still pretty salty, though. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I, I just remember doing family competitions. Uh, we used to play Su- Donkey Kong Country, like, I literally love- all the time. Okay. Yeah, who, so here, who here had tournament, f- uh, not tournament fighters, Turtles in Time for Super Nintendo? Uh, I only played it at a friend's house. I didn't have it. And the arc- Oh, I missed the arcade days where you could just go to like the laundromat and like you see a bunch of kids <laughs> also there. And you Preach. like, you, you felt like right and your now. mom would give you a bunch of quarters and be like, 
hey, uh, I need to go do some laundry. I need to keep you busy. So here's some quarters. Go have fun with the other kids. I used to I'm take these like, white boys' money for Street <laughs> Fighter. I used yeah. to take Oh, yeah. The hustle <laughs> was so for good. I'd get Chung Lee and just push him in a corner and just go wild and be like, give me all that, all, all your quarters, all your money. Every time I beat him, I'm like, it's a dollar here and just rake it up. <laughs> That's how my sister plays. One of plays them became second. my best friend and we're still best friends to this day. We've been friends for 34 wow. years. <laughs> Your sister did that second car. No, she just button mashes, but she does the same thing. Just tries <laughs> to keep people in a corner. Uh. Oh yeah, but um, <laughs> yeah, that's what my mom used to do. My mom used to. She got me into gaming, early, very early. She was like, I w- I, w- I made a joke to her a long time ago because she used to get nothing but Nintendo systems, and like when we got older, and I reminisced about it, I was like, "Mom, you were like a Nintendo hoe. You would like get every Ooh, Nintendo thing." Ho? Yeah, <laughs> she laughed at it. She was very like, "I'll let you." She like, "I'll let you get away with a couple things once in a while." Here's your ticket. Go ahead and say something stupid. Yeah. I couldn't even say bull sheep, or I was beat to death. Like, <laughs> So she was like, um, she will always like get all these Nintendo systems. And then she got me. I think the thing that really got me into as a gamer was the Sega Genesis. And it was Sonic the Hedgehog. It was the first level of Sonic the Hedgehog, the first game. Mm -hmm. And it was fighting Robotnik. And I was like really young. And he killed me and I started to cry. So then my mom mom walks in. I was like, he killed me. She goes, well, you pick up the controller and you go again. I'm like, okay. So I started like really getting better at games at a very young age. I played Rocket Knight Adventure. If anyone knows that game, yes! that's classic. Yes! That game is not easy. That game is not easy. The game is like battle toads. It's battle like toads. the battle toads. It's battle really toads hard. level three broke me as a gamer, and I'm <laughs> that if that that level where you are on the uh on, on the, the right, right. End, yeah, on it's the level right three. End. You literally had to focus your eyes on the right side where the thing was coming I up. You can't even. Yeah. So I'm just gonna say it. I've never <laughs> beaten level myself. Uh, I've beaten it once, and I got and because after I that, gave a neighborhood kid five bucks, and he beat it for me. <laughs> I got to where the snakes come out the holes. It was like the third or fourth level of that game. Yeah, I was yeah, just that game like, not a, oof, that game is rough. I've been debating playing that game for charity, and I'm not. I'm not Don't happy. do it. It's not so, worth your life. So it's you modern right, so gamers who love Demon Souls and Bloodborne, play some I, of the yeah. old school classics. Yeah, and, I say and that. See, yep. have some, try Mega Man without knowing what the uh, sequence is to fight the bosses. And let's see if you can make it. <laughs> I just really like to be stressed out, you know. <laughs> I played Dark Souls, man. I'm I'm a I love Dark. I played Dark the Souls first, is uh, terrible. I played we, one level and was done with it. I was done yeah. with it. Was, we got people level. in the chat saying Lion King was probably their hardest game. Really? <laughs> oh, I just can't wait to be king level. That level will <laughs> that level will tell you if you are a true if what kind of amount of torture that you like. If you can like, like, if you can get past that level. I probably can get past, past it. that level. It's so Earth hard. Earthworm Jim, like, where you're underwater and oh the thing breaks. God. Glass breaks. That was that's rough. Look, try to get the do the whole NES version of the first Ninja Turtle game after you beat the damn. Good luck trying to beat that techno draw was. Mm-mm-mm. See, we're but, a bunch of people that enjoy frustration. Clearly, in oh this. yeah, for real. I <laughs> but you know, but it's, it makes us better gamers. It makes it it's like us best black gamers. Uh, that's true. Gotta say that. Uh, but before we go, um, I want to uh, throw it to you guys. What final words would you give to the listeners, to the people who are viewing this, who maybe just now are following you, a uh, subscriber to you? In this time that we have it, what do you want to give give them to uplift them, for them to show that you know, be positive if, if you are coming a content creator or if you are a content creator or just a gamer in general. What are your final words of uplifting them at this time? Um, Cam, I'm going to start with you. Oh, don't start but with first, me. I'm trying to, I'm thinking, I'm thinking. I'm thinking. <laughs> okay. Uh, uh, Carl? Uh, um, I, I got to throw it back to Tupac then. Uh, just- <laughs> Keep keep your head up, you know. Uh, I mm-hmm. think it's a, it's about the journey. As a friend of mine 
yep. often says. Um, so I'm thankful to have been here today uh, with all 66 of my YouTube subscribers. Um, and just getting my voice heard and, and letting smaller content creators know that there's, you know, opportunities for them out there. Um, they just have to stick with it. And uh, more importantly, just keep having fun with your craft because that's what it is at the end of the day, yours. And um, if you're not having fun with it and just trying to, you know, make it into a, you know, millions ninja type career, then you probably won't have fun. You know, yeah. yes. Tiffany, what are your final words? I say just in the end, regardless of like where you stand and what are you doing currently, just keep climbing, just keep going. Um, the worst part about like living today and especially in this time, it's like running a track race, you know, you want to keep running and you see these obstacles in your way. You see these people trying to bring you down. You just need to get past them. You have to just keep going because us as content creators, we're going to be the people, the voices of these up and comers that want to get into the same business as us, want to create the same things as us. And we have to keep going to inspire them to keep, that there's hope, regardless of the color of our skin, that we can be something, regardless of what people may think of us, these racists and uh, cop killers and all this shit that's happening. Damn, I cursed again. All this stuff that's happening. So I really want people to just be inspired. If you see like someone like Cam doing good or someone like myself doing good or someone like Zombie doing good, I want you guys to understand that there's hope. There's always hope in the future of our people. Those that just keep going. Don't stop. It's like that Utada song. I always <laughs> listen to it. It's like, um, I think it was like. <clears throat> I don't wish. Wait, you talking about Hikaru? I don't care about anything. Don't go to me to match my side as soon. It's like, uh, keep trying. Oh, it's keep, was... keep trying. Which and album? It's like. <laughs> I'm always a money gone into the. I'm a more sunny. I'm more sunny. Is that song? It's like keep trying, trying. It's, is it from keep her latest album? No, it's like from her fourth. But it's such a cute song. It's like I listen to it every day. Like it was like okay, don't give up. Keep pushing forward. Fuck the haters. I swore again. Fuck the haters. <laughs> and just don't let anyone get you down. Just don't. And if someone is like in your DMs giving you shit, give them give them a piece of humble pie or just tell them to fuck off. And then block them. <laughs> like you like either you could choose either either path A or B. Whatever the out outcome is, your choice in the end. But don't let anyone bring you down. Just keep going. Inspire. Be the next voice, big voice in this community. Whether it's streaming, voice acting, entertainment, video gaming, anything. Just keep going. Don't stop. Don't can't stop. Won't stop. Yes. As Lucio would say. Yes. Uh, Cam, are you able? To, I gave uh... you guys enough time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. Um. I just say, just yeah, just ignore the haters, man. Just like, uh, just try and uh, don't let anyone knock you down. Don't let anyone um, discourage you to do what you want to do. Um, you know, uh, thankfully, I uh, throughout my like, I'm I'm still relatively new to the industry. I've only been in the industry for a year and like three months now. But uh, you know, every I, I've always. Outside of like the random comments, you know, I, I I've been blessed with just like a, people supporting me and uh, trying to help raise my voice. Um, so you know, don't don't let uh, any negativity get you down. Uh, just keep yourself keep yourself motivated, keep yourself pushing, and um, you know, before you know, it, you're gonna be move you're gonna be moving forward. You're gonna be getting to where you want to be. So. Um, you know, just, just keep things positive, uh, uh, you know, spread love and, um, you'll get, you'll get it in return. I love Zom that. Zombie. Uh, yeah. motivate us. <laughs> keep, yeah. Keep, keep moving forward and keep looking upwards all the time. Like, and, and realize that no matter what your size of your following is and all that stuff that people like to push on us about social media. Sorry, I just hit this with my cast. <laughs> um, whatever social media is, et cetera, uh, that doesn't determine your worth or your value. Mm -hmm. And I know that a lot of people get caught up in numbers and do I have reach or do mm -hmm. I have this and that? And it's like, 
don't worry about that in the beginning mm-hmm. and don't even worry about it in, in the, I don't know, at the, at the end of it. Um, know your worth, know your value from the door. Um, make sure you solidify like what your brand is or what your morals are before you, if before you hit that stream button and decide you want to like stream or be a content creator, make sure you have a core set of morals and values and just let those guide you on your path and things will fall in the way side of your path. I've never strayed from the path of representation. Um, Corey, you guys all know that like, Jesse, Ed, y'all know how I've been from the beginning. I've been very vocal about representation and women of color. Like, you know, that talking about lupus and being very visible with an invisible illness is very important yeah. to me. Um, so, like, just stay on your path and, and just reach out and ask for opportunities. Um, even if you're afraid people will say no, the worst that can happen is that somebody says no to you, but to be used to rejection is good. It's healthy to learn to take rejection because it's going to happen. Because if y'all knew how many people before this podcast turned me down for anything, Mm, you know, know even though I was about to be a partner on Mixer, like people still turn me down for all kinds of, just like the most minimal stuff. I, I haven't been getting opportunities. And now, you know, I'm probably not getting a ton, but I'm still getting some. And to me, that's great. Like, before I had this opportunity to be on Spawn on Me, I I still stood on the same level of morals that I have now. I still have the same brand that I have now. And going forward, I think it's important as black content creators in particular that we work with companies that echo our our voice, you know, like our our morals and uplift our voices and not just when it's convenient for them. Mm-hmm. They need to have like a record of doing these things and be careful because just a retweet and stuff like that is powerful. Our voices and our opinions and our culture matters. Our culture is the most copied culture in, in the world. Amen. We are the most one. influential in the world. They want to look like us. They want to have bodies like us. They want to listen to our music. They want to dance like us. They want everything. So before you go co-signing anything, realize that your stuff, like no matter if you're big or small has value. And your check mark of these companies have value, so don't let them use you right now. Mm-hmm. And if you do, make sure that you're running that ball, like I said earlier, to throw it back. You're running it as far as you can for the next person to pick it up. And that's what I want to leave you guys on. I love you guys. I want to thank everybody for coming on the show. I want to thank Ed and his church clothes for letting me co-host with him. <laughs> You leave his church clothes alone. I just just like his church clothes, okay? Thank you. I had to give my final word. Thank you. Um, But I I would like to say to everybody, first and foremost, thank you to everybody who has joined us on the stream, who has, you know, vibe with us, who has made a comment. You know, first of all, thank you, Jesse and Corey, for uh, monitoring the chat. Um, You know, uh, craziness came out. Uh, I know nothing about it because you guys were on the ball. Um, Thank you guys for, like, really to everybody who's watching, find a support system. People who are going to support you, whether that's family or friends or even just other people who have the same interests like you on social media. You always want a good support system if you're going to get into constant creativity. Um, Always go in positive with a mindset of having fun whether you mess up whether you do it perfect whether you feel like oh no i'm dying a lot you know whatever you do it go in there with laughs go in there with having fun because you will actually be entertaining and meet new people through fun and there's going to be some people who going to laugh at you about your skill and stuff or say things about what you're doing but like zombie said keep going Stay mm-hmm. strong, carry that ball all the way Because guess what, when you're making Content, whether it's for yourself or for Others, be proud that you Are making it, and while Everything that's going on There are other black people Other races who need Content to make them feel good Um, I, One of my uh Twitter friends that I Just met, like Chris V You know, he did a house mix yesterday I'm a Chicago house head, so whether I, I love listen, Chicago I'm, house, Whew. Yes, whether I listen to DJ Funk, Wax Master, uh, some uh, album called Master Tracks, whatever, 
hard house, deep house, ghetto house, whatever. I've been having the mindset of vibing real mm-hmm. good and dancing and stuff and thinking about how Streets of Rage 2 played a part in me loving house music and how chest shapes and beats I still talk about that about Hor- Hor- uh, Forza Horizon 4 the house mix from UK and stuff and just like how dance dance music has been keeping me positive and make me want to continue to podcast and continue continue to write and stuff and put me in good vibe uh me and jesse we talk about music almost every day and so having that good one and you know we did a 1v1 with john tyler star and learning from him and stuff and having those opportunities to talk to various people and stuff it makes me feel good that i'm doing this work and whether someone sees it or not i'm proud of the work that i'm doing and hopefully it will touch somebody and inspire somebody or make them make their day feel good if they go and look for that person you know it's, it's always good we want to continue Definitely with black voices, definitely with black content creators. We want to continue to have a safe space and we want to expand so that we can showcase that other black people and just anyone who wants to get in that if you that if you love our work, you could do it too. It takes time and it takes efforts. It's going to be some more, it's going to be more downs than more ups. But you know what? Every down that you get is a learning experience. You learn from it, you rebound from it, and you go up. And that's what this kind of talk was. It's just like uplifting through our creativity. So whether we write, whether we podcast, whether we make a tweet, whether we do a gift, whether we on Instagram, mm-hmm. uh, TikTok, whatever, we want to continue to inspire you guys. Yes, it is a difficult moment for different races. A lot of white people are not understanding. Some people are rejecting it. Yep. Some people are, people are being called out. But this is what this is showcasing why voice matter and why black voices matter and our lives matter. Um, and through our content, we want to continue talking. We want to kind of the conversation to happen first and uh, last of all, most we want everybody to feel welcome. And when you make someone feel welcome, whether they are new to it or not, um, making them feel welcome makes them feel part of the conversation. And when you make someone feel like they're part of the conversation, they enjoy what's going on. Now, the feedback might be crazy, but when you make them feel like they're part of the conversation, you know that your work is good. So with that, everybody, uh, we're going to get into plugs. Kim, where can we find you? Yeah, you can find me on Twitter at the Cinephile Guy, and I stream on Twitch, twitch.tv slash the Cinephile Guy. Uh, you can follow Dual Shockers at Dual Shockers on Twitter and DualShockers.com. Carl, where can we find you? Uh, I am on Twitter, Instagram, and YouTube, all under Carl MF. That's Carl with a C. Um, got some Skeletech gameplay impressions and a review coming up today, actually. So check it out. Zombie, where can we find you? I'm Zombie Kills on all socials. Twitter, Twitch, Mixer, which is dead. (laughs) (laughs) Wow. You know, y'all can find me anywhere. (laughs) (laughs) Tiffany, where can we find you? You can find me on Twitter at underscore Tiffany Witcher, Instagram underscore Tiffany Witcher, TiffanyWitcher.com on and Twitch. You can find me at Tiffany Witcher uh, for my social plugs. You guys can find um, Jesse at Phantom NXS. You can find Corey at Iron Corey in HD 713. I may have said it wrong, but you can find him <laughs> here on Black <laughs> He's nodding. He's like, yeah, it's totally wrong, but <laughs> Corey is so used to Ed and Corey having differences, he just accepts it as part of life at this point. <laughs> You can yeah. find me <laughs> on Twitter at that retro code. You can check out Boss Rush Games on our uh, website, bossrushgames.com. Check us out on YouTube by Boss Rush Games. Check out our podcast, uh, Boss Rush Podcast, Arsenal X, Nintendo Power Block, 1v1, Standard Definition, and more. Everybody, thank you for uh, listening. Also, thank you to Sean Malone and Megan Green. Thank you guys for also being in the chat. And checking out and joining our community, joining the team. Want to give you guys a shout out too because you guys do phenomenal work and you really support us, and we love that. With that, everybody, have a great week. Have a great weekend. Be strong. Be kind to one another. 
as always, let's play games and be better. Uh, oh, should we all throw a black fist or something? I don't know. <laughs> black, black lives matter. Black, black lives matter. Black lives mm-hmm. matter. Uh, and with that, everybody, we will see you next time when we have another Black Lives Matter panel. With that, everybody, see you later. Bye. Bye.